Hello, hello, and welcome to our usual Wednesday live cast. It's um, not a whole lot of people here. We're not too crowded. We've been working on James Tanner's week, of course, and so in a moment, we're going to be uh, talking about the information and the discoveries that were found. Now, his captains, Joan and Janet, worked their tails off this week, but um, are not in the right time zone for this live cast reveal, so I have all their notes. It's all good. And I want to say um, a little bit of a thanks already. I'll say more in a minute, but a little bit of a thanks just to start with for all of you that have stuck through this entire year through this challenge. And we're on our last guest of 2021. Very, very exciting stuff. Very exciting. So I'm going to do the little spiel about WikiTree in case you don't um, know who we are. And we are a community of genealogists who are working together on a single family tree. In other words, we collaborate to grow an accurate and global tree, and it's free. The Wiki Tree Challenge has been our year long event and part of our year of accuracy, where each week a team of Wiki Treeers takes on a genealogy guest uh, star's tree and they try and make it as accurate and complete as it is anywhere. Um, really big on the accuracy this year, and you guys have really come through on that. Now, of course, our goal is to improve accuracy on WikiTree, add more family connections, and make more friends, and we've done all three of those things. So let's go ahead and bring up the presentation and see what we have for James. And I saw you down there somewhere, Marion. <laughs> Hi. So once again, we have James here and we're gonna go ahead and hit on this first line. Now, you know, I'd like to say um, that for one thing with the brick walls, and, and I know I talk about that later too, as far as the points that people get, um, you know, but, but everything that was out there, people worked so hard on this week and I just wanna recognize them for that. Uh, James's lines were very, very well researched, very well documented. And, you know, and so we got off to a really big surge of a start adding those people that we didn't have on Wiki Tree. And then everybody had to, you know, hit the brakes and slow down and try and find what they can. So each of these, you know, bits of information that have been collected about the family members are something while they were doing the rest of their um, really, really careful research. And it's all appreciated. Now we start with uh, the first of the great grandparents. And so that would be on Henry Martin Tanner's line. Lying. And one of the researchers found that his fifth great grandfather, Francis Tanner of Rhode Island, had a couple of young black slaves, a male named Quam and a female named Chloe. And James, we don't know if you've um, come across this in your records. Now, they showed up in the 1774 Rhode Island census and in his will. He died in 1777, so mm -hmm. right against the American Revolution. Uh, he wound up in the possession of your fourth great grandfather, Joshua Tanner. Mm -hmm. um, presumably after Francis died, that's that's what we figure with the way the records went. But in 1778, he actually won his freedom by enlisting in the Continental Army. So the law that enabled this, their special black regiment is what they called it, in which Quam served. Um, th there were a lot of interesting stories that are worth looking into that tie into that. But as a soldier, he actually got out there, you know, on the front lines and exper experienced some really serious action. He wound up becoming a prisoner of war. He was later liberated after the treaty that ended the Revolutionary War. And Quam lived to a very old age in upstate New York where he was a farmer. So um, you'll see more information on that profile for that. But it was just really interesting that that trade was worked out. Um, and, I, and I do know that Joshua Tanner did get some amount of money uh, for allowing him to go into service. But it, we just thought it was really cool that, you know, that he let him do that kind of a trade um, to go ahead and earn his freedom. And so next we have on Eliza Ellen Parkinson's line, we have Elizabeth Chattel Parkinson, and that's your third great grandmother. And you may have already known that she was a twin. Also unique about her is that she had a brother born two years before her on the exact same date. Elizabeth went on to marry James Parkinson and they had at least four children together. While she and James had migrated to New South Wales in 1849, her twin Susanna stayed in England 
with her husband and family. So Laura has it that Susanna had nine children with her husband, Thomas Broughton. And you would almost think, you know, that the twins would, would find a way to stay closer, but. They, they actually left um, as a result of the poor laws. Basically, um, what was happening at that time, instead of establishing poor houses for taking care of the poor, the government had a program that they would subsidize them leaving and going to Australia. So they did. And um, apparently some of these, some of this group, they all, they all kind of knew each other. Uh, they came from the same areas um, that um, they also uh, intermarried because that's how I get the, because I get Parkinson's and Bryant's and Stapley's all who ended up in, in uh, Australia. Okay, and then we're going to move over to Henry Christian Overson's line. Now, here we had uh, Danish researchers this week, which was really fun. Uh, they were great. We haven't had a lot of chance to work with them over the year. And so the ones that did come in were, you know, just really motivated and dedicated to this. And once again, this is just all volunteer uh, time that people are putting in. So there, but there was a little bit of confusion about Ove Anderson, your fourth great grandfather. And while the birth record clearly said, or the baptism record, that his mother was Elsie El Soren's daughter, further research showed that her sister Karen was actually the wife of Anders Jensen, and that Elsie was simply a witness on these other records. So our researcher concluded that that was most likely just an error in the baptism record when it was written out, and that Karen was his mother as well. Um, since he had married Karen, if it would have been, say, an illegitimate child of Elsie's, they would have written that in the baptism, mm -hmm. and they didn't. So um, it's thought that they just accidentally flipped those two names, and Karen should be the mother, and Elsie wasn't. So that's just, you know, one of the ways that they focus on being very careful and looking at everything, not just going, oh, I found a record and it says this. They look at everything around it and they, they tried really hard to make your branches really accurate. That's, um, really, that's a really interesting, thank you. Yeah, that's it's not something you see very often. Now we go to Margaret Godfrey Jarvis's line and here we're looking at Joseph DeFries. And I don't know um, if you had heard this either, but this is your sixth great grandfather. And he married in somewhat of an unorthodox uh, manner without bans or license. The event took place in 1753 in St. George's Chapel in Westminster. It transpires that the Mayfair Chapel was actually a center for clandestine marriages that took place without bans or license by Alexander Keith, who was an, an or, unorthodox and excommunicated. And there were a number of, um, you know, marriages that, that he performed. And so your sixth great grandfather was one of those, um, but they did look extensively to make sure they were understanding that correctly. Yeah, and the DeFrieses were Jewish and this may have been the reason and it may have been, um, what are called crypto Jews, those who hid their their Jewishness and practiced that in private, and then they would get married and have the church and go to church and all that, so that they appeared to be good Christians in uh, at the Church of England during the during the weeks, and then on Saturdays they would be Jewish. So that was that that's that's probably consistent. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense, though. I've yeah. seen that in, in, you know, in other countries um, where they yeah. do the same thing. So this would be, that would be a good explanation for that. Yes. That's very good to find out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now here we had, and this was, uh, this was an exciting breakthrough for us. This was made on the Hamilton line yesterday. And after researchers traveled to two different counties to search through the actual records in the courthouses, um, and found that Margaret Turner Hamilton's father's name was Jesse Turner. Way to go. Way to go. So <laughs> there, I mean, there's no birth records for now that, that area good. during That's that good. time. That you totally know, 
<laughs> his uh he died in test date so there was no you know will to leave and there just happened to be one mention in an obscure book that the courthouse thought they lost that where he was they were mentioning that a bond was paid for guardianship for his children so not only does she have a father she has four siblings now now her mother unfortunately this was um you know this happened also last minute there wasn't time to get um, further records and do the search for the mother's maiden name but we do have the uh name of who she remarried to and those probates, uh, it's actually listed in his estate inventory, which is attached to his profile. And it says, um, you know, the person that David Boyer, that the widow intermarried with during this probate process, which went from 1799 to 1806. So um, we have her second husband and I, she may or may not have had children with them. I don't know, but that was, that was a big find. So that was very exciting. Oh, no. for yeah, that, that's great. That's wonderful. That's, that's a major issue. We, I, that's been out there for so long that I just, it's one of those things where you don't even look at it anymore because you're just tired of thinking about it. I know, and you look, you know, you look on the other sites and, and you know, what I was getting is that you look on all these other sites and this person says, oh, it was their descended from this person. Oh, her dad was him. Oh, her dad came from North Carolina. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, there's like all these wild guesses, but nobody had any sources out there that we could see um, when this week started. No, no there isn't and, anything. There was never anything. So definitely. That's, That's wonderful. Yeah. And if you need any more of that probate, just let us know <laughs> after the fact, because we do have somebody in driving distance. Now on Mary Ann Linton's line, um, these aren't direct ones necessarily, but brothers Peter Sutton, it was interesting uh, information, and Henry John Sutton, both great grand uncles to you, born in Lancashire, England, enlisted in the Utah Territory Military Cavalry for the Black Hawk War in April of 1866. Now they were discharged in June. So two months later, it was a very short enlistment. And it seems to be due to an uprising by the Timpanogos and resulting in the Spanish Fork Diamond Battle. Mm -hmm. So the chief I'm, had been, go I'm ahead. Very, yeah, I'm very familiar with all that history here in Provo, that's right here where we're here in Utah Valley. Oh, where you're at? Oh, wow. So then you know then all about this. Um, yeah, the, 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 the whole story. That's and that, it's really interesting though. It's, it's really uh, something that's hard to find and hard to get because it's not necessarily, it's not gonna ever be in a genealogy book. Right. But it's always fun to find a little bit more out about the actual people and the times that they lived in and get a little bit of perspective. Yeah. Now we had something else on this line and this actually happened even more recent than the other find. <laughs> this was right before broadcast time. Ellen Glover Ellison, your fourth great grandmother was the focus of one of our researchers, Ian Speed. He found that her mother was Margaret Bramhall instead of Peggy Nelson. Now, him and several people had been down a rabbit hole looking at all the relatives, possibly cousins, siblings, everybody's records trying to get this um, sort of, but she was not a Peggy Nelson. And Margaret and her husband, William Glover, married in Walton on the Hill in Lancashire and went on to have 10 children. So they do have a very well-documented family there. Oh, okay. Now here we have Marianne on Marianne Linton's line, Elizabeth Robinson Sutton, and that's your sixth great grandmother um, was researched by actually by your captain, by Joan. So instead of the Robert Robinson that was marked down as her father, his name proved to be Peter Robinson. Um, unfortunately, these baptism entries didn't include the mother's name, but um, this entry that, that was located does show that the father's name was Peter. So that was just a little bit of a, a correction on that line. You know, and once again, you know, like I said, your lines, and you already knew this, our research so far out, like your sixth, seventh generation, you're, you know, six generations, you're strong. Um, there's just some things that uh, there might be some variances outside of that. 
And we certainly, and plus we had some cleanup to do on our own branches, which we do every week. You know, we find profiles that somebody uploaded a long time ago and didn't really do anything with. We get them connected correctly. And then we go in there and we get those sources on there so that they're, they're, um, you know, really complete. Now, this one, again, was our Danish researchers, and we are on Marinus's line. Marianne Lars' daughter, your third great-grandmother, had no parents on the primary tree, and research actually proved her parents to be Lars Larson and Marin Anders' daughter. So there are actually six new direct ancestors on this line. Oh, um, wow. These yeah, these ancestors are all from Denmark. So luckily we had Henny who actually worked on these for us. And she was um, saying that Loris Thompson, Marianne's paternal grandfather, was a farmer who married Anne Loris' daughter and had six children with her. And then the maternal grandfather was Anders Jensen, who was the son of Jens Hansen and Inger's and Anders' daughter. I'm sure I'm getting some of this wrong, which actually will be two more ancestors. So there should actually be eight new direct ancestors on there. Wow. Um, but they're really good about the experts about not wanting to add those parents just because they know the name. You know, they want to have the time to look for the records. So the six that you do see on there, uh, their marriages have, have been searched for and documented and the children that they've had. Um, the interesting story here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Marinus Christensen's my great-grandfather, and he uh, he went by Christensen. He was adopted by the Christensen's. That was the, the story from the family. Uh, the family story was he was adopted. And uh, I just, within the last few days, found a, a letter that my mother had written uh, to a researcher in uh, in Denmark trying to find out uh, who Marinus's parents were um, and whether, you know, whether he was really adopted because there was some question of, of whether he was or was not. I had found one church record that indicated he was adopted. So I was pretty sure that was the case, but we didn't have any clue. Uh, my daughter did the research to come up with the Marcusen line. Right. And discovered that that was probably it. And then that was confirmed with the DNA report that we had because we have DNA shared with that particular line. And that's the only possible way that that could have happened. And so we're fairly, more than fairly certain now that this is correct. But of course, this has all happened like within the last few months, uh, you know, type thing. So we're not, uh, Thank you so much for a little bit more, more, more research than we had done ourselves. But oh, so. definitely, and you know, every little bit helps. I mean, this is something that you can take and and move on with this and expand these lines even further. Oh, I'm yeah. From here on, we'll uh, my daughters will be glad to see this. And they do make sure. You know, one of the things we try and encourage. We're frozen. Back again. I know. Somebody told me you were gone. I was like, well, I'm going to look. It just said my internet came back up. No, no. I've been sitting here waiting. I was, I live with the internet. That's okay. <laughs> oh, it, we usually don't, but with all the tornadoes that were recently here, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, uh, they did a lot of damage. And hello, Eileen. That's what I was going to ask next. And make sure you guys could hear this because, yes, um, Mindy's internet <laughs> went down. But I know they have been working really hard to try and fix all of the massive damage that those horrible um, tornadoes did in Kentucky. And, you know, that's... Um, the least of people's worries. So I can't even complain about my internet going down for that reason. Um, you know, there was just a, immense amounts of damage. But I do want to go ahead and let's see. I'm not going to worry about um, explaining our collaboration because a lot of that's going to change this next year anyways. Now, um, we did have some military slides. I think I would like to do that at least and recognize the military personnel. Sorry for flipping through this, but we did have, and you may know about all of these already, James, but, you know, we always try and honor those that, that served. Um, 
And so we keep track of those while we're going through the profiles and working on them. So we have your fourth great grandfather, Joshua T Tanner, who served in the Revolutionary War as an ensign in the fourth company um, from 1st Regiment, Washington County Brigade, Rhode Island Militia. We, you had William Ray that was a private in the service for Massachusetts in the Revolutionary War. A Wade Hopkins was a major in the Revolutionary War. He was one of the Green Mountain Boys and was killed in action at 14 Mile Island in New York in 1779. Um, David Shepard was one of the Green Mountain Boys also and he was serving under Ethan Allen and Seth Warner. Now, for the War of 1812, they only found one. There may have been more, of course, than these that we found. But your third great-grandfather, Samuel Shepard, served in the War of 1812. Uh, for World War I, of course, Arthur Jarvis was a sergeant. And then the Civil War, your great-granduncle, William Harrison, served. And then four uncles, sons of your third great-grandfather, William Linton, served in the Civil War from Pennsylvania. Now, William Linton was killed in action at Fair Oaks, Virginia, but his brothers Josiah, John, and James all lived and served and survived. So um, that's just nice to, you know, point that out. And my great-grandfather, my grandfather, um, Leroy Parkinson Tanner, also served in World War One. And my father served in World War II. And oh, um, there's a few more. So a, a, a strong uh, family of service there. That's great. And I, now, served, here... I served for eight years. So in the, Oh, well, um, thank you for your service then. We always appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk for just a minute about the fan charts. Now, the starting fan chart, I usually get that pulled what these are the people that we have on Wikitree. So usually we start with the great grandparents. Now, some of these were already on, um, but then our researchers took off, like I told you, with that little burst of speed because the first ones were, uh, you know, first six generations were so well researched. And they had some of these people already added on before I could even get the fan chart pulled. So, but this is what we started with on Wikitree. So you can see there's a couple of little branches that really stretch out there and the rest of them don't. And I do also know that somebody had done and um, outside of the challenge had done some work on those branches earlier in the year. Now, the next one is my brick wall chart, and I love the, the fan charts. I know not everybody uses them, but this is where uh, we go ahead and mark where all of the available brick walls. Now, they may not be brick walls like you're stuck. Brick walls can't solve them. Um, it may be lines you haven't gotten back to in a while, or maybe you have them, but they just aren't documented on the primary tree. Um, this is every first ancestor we get to that's not documented, where there's not a parent, is where those yellow spots are. So that's where we focus our specialists at, and we try and and get those brick walls down. Um, on the left is just a blow up of the legend showing, you know, that each one of those uh, spots that has a B is where we've broken a brick wall. And then we also had some or corrections that we've talked about during the live cast tonight. And um, where we've just found that maybe the name was wrong or the person was wrong and we've we've tried to correct that. Sometimes, James, it's just that your tree was right, but our tree was wrong and our people still get points for that because they're making it really accurate. So we appreciate them um, making all of, and they had a lot, a lot of corrections to make. Uh, they found a lot of profiles floating around that just were not where, where, you know, at the level they should have been. So they did some pretty incredible work this week, cleaning all of those up. Now, this would be the, the ending nine generations. So this is how many people you have on your wiki tree branches now. And this is more what it should look like. You know, it's, it's really, really full. Um, eighth generation, you have some big gaps. And then that very outer ring, of course, is nine generations. And you just have some little spots that are filled in here and there and, and a lot that can be done by wiki treeers after that. Um, but, you know, you have a lot of people on, on wiki tree now. Oh, good. Great. Thanks. And then, you know, we do um, go through our collaboration. We do spreadsheets this year, our G2G post, and definitely Discord as means of collaboration. And, you know, I've already seen a lot of signups for this next year. So I'm sure we're going to be using some of the same things. Some of it's going to change a little bit. 
uh, overall, we'll still be collaborating. We are a collaborative community and, you know, we work together to get these things done. And then, you know, it's, it's definitely not about the points, but the point system does help keep us motivated. And we do like to acknowledge the people that have gotten the most points at the end of the week. And for this week, and this may have changed again, if it has, I apologize guys, but um, it kind of kept flip flopping a little bit there. Well, who we had for our MVP, most valuable uh, person was Maddie Hardman this week. So yay, Maddie um, up there again. We had Joe Fitzhenry. So uh, she's uh, not been real active in the challenge, but it was incredible this week. Henny Henriksen, this was her first time, I believe, working with us on the challenge. And she did a lot of the Danish research along with other people that aren't mentioned here. And we so appreciate the, their expertise and, you know, them lending their, volunteering their time. Now, Donna Bowman, she's on the charts all the time. She always stays busy during the week and finds something to work on, and so does Anonymous Sharky. So they had four and five. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a refresh so I can make sure we have this right for the scores for James's week. You can see that Maddie definitely was in that number one slot still. So this is what we look at now for the first set of points here. This was total points. And, you know, so for every time um, they added a sibling, a child, a parent, any kind of an, an ancestor, they got points. Plus this includes the bounty points. So this is everything. And you can see that Maddie had 73 points and the total was 565 for um, all together. And for the next one, now these would be direct ancestors that were added. So only on your direct line, each one of those ancestors, they added 133 in a week. And that's 133 with sources. Now we don't touch the profiles, uh, you know, below the great grandparent level, but everything else uh, we expect our researchers to put sources on and hopefully narrative. So most of them are really good about that now. And then the next number, the 312, that would be for nuclear ancestors. So once again, that's those children, um, siblings, the other, they, a lot a lot of times we wind up adding further than that. You know, you get down a rabbit hole, you get in there, you get the brother-in-law, you get his kids. Um, they don't get points for that, but we try and do it anyways, because it just really fleshes out the family. And sometimes it helps you sort out those tricky relationships that you're trying to find. And then for bounty points, it says 120, but there were actually 140 with those uh, final additions. And so that would be 14 of what we consider brick wall ancestors, although once again, some of those did include the corrections. Now, 829, that would be 829 unique profiles that our people edited in one week, which is just incredible if you mm -hmm. stop and think about it. And then for contributions, now we always, uh, our system automatically keeps track of contributions. So every time we go in and we edit a profile and say we add a source, we update the name, we fix a birth date, it counts as a contribution. And, you know, there are a lot of things that people did uh, during the week that didn't count within this score even, you know, for people that worked on space pages and there is a good, really good space page about a location that you'll get a link to and, um, you know, other things, people that were just being the second set of eyes, people that were looking for newspaper articles, stuff like that didn't count. And even then there were 3,122 contributions during the week towards just your branches. So um, I know <laughs> it's just amazing. Um, these guys are incredible. They really are. And okay, so I'm going to pull that down for just a second. Pop ups. And so, James, do you think that um, we at least met your expectations for the Wiki Tree Challenge Week and brought you new information? Absolutely. <laughs> a lot more than I expected, I actually. <laughs> But, yeah, it's got to be it's got to be tough when you have such a complete, um, you know, set of branches like you do. Your tree is very full. Yeah, well, you get even though we have enough, my daughters, some of my daughter, well, most of my 
my uh, children once in a while, but two of my daughters very, very consistently are looking. And uh, it's still hard because there's just so many lines and so many different people. And you get back to a thousand ancestors and then you're, you know, who do you, who do you work on? I know, you know, and plus it's like, you know, it's going to take longer before you discover something. Like when you work in those first couple of generations, you're finding records left and right. Um, by the time you get worked out into that seven, eight, nine, boy, you're like really having to put some time in to get one person figured yeah. out. No, you really, it's, it gets exponentially harder. So it's, it's quite a difficult. So it's really, it's really great. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Oh, it's, it's definitely been our pleasure. And, um, you know, we, even with the holidays, we had such a good participation. I think you had uh, more than 34 people that were working on your branches, you yeah. know, around the clock basically this week. And so, uh, you know, it's just been such a, a great gift to be able that to give to people. Great gift. Thank you so much. Okay, and I am going to bring this in. Greg Clark, where were you when my when my internet went down? Um, sorry, I see Greg in the, the audience there. And so now I'm going to go ahead and talk for a few minutes to our participants and viewers that are still watching. Thank you guys for hanging out through this and being so patient. But, you know, I just want to say that it is still so hard to believe we just wrapped up our final guest for year 2021. And the fun will not stop, though. It'll be a little bit different. And so let's look at a few things that will change. Now, for the year 2022, we have guest stars that are notable, but outside of the genealogy world now. Um, we're starting out the year with Jimmy Wales, who, of course, is the founder of Wikipedia and an internet mogul. We have Paul Gilmartin from the Mental Illness Happy Hour podcast. And, you know, and he's uh, done so many other things on top of that. I couldn't list them all. And then, of course, Haas Froberg, a musician, and he just released a brand new album. He's been doing uh, interviews like crazy left and right for his album he just released. So, you know, maybe he'll still feel some of that excitement and get to share it with us when we do feature him. But, um, you know, definitely it's going to be different doing people that are non-genealogists and don't um, already have a good, really good handle on their tree to see what you guys can do with it. Uh, challenge weeks for the upcoming year will be no more than once every two weeks. Now, that doesn't mean you get two weeks necessarily to work on somebody's tree. And I know um, a lot of you had asked for that this year. And I was the same. I was like, man, that week ended way too fast. You know, we need more time. But um, it allows you to do some other things in between because some of you, these participants, I know you guys have stayed, you know, on this challenge, volunteering your time the entire year. Some of you have been here all year um, doing this. And so we want to make it so that you have a little bit more time for other WikiTree fun, you know, because all the fun's on WikiTree. So <laughs> on the off weeks, you can still, you know, hang out and do other things. And then another thing, one thing that won't change that much is your captains. And of course, the list of participating captains for 2022 is here. And you will see most of the same uh, supportive and friendly names and faces that you have had this year. And there isn't anything um, brand new, no secrets to come out. Uh, we did split Janet and Jonah. Um, <laughs> not, not that they're not still great friends, but Janet will be her own captain this, this upcoming year. And so will Joe. And then other than that, you guys recognize all of those names. And so um, they'll still be supporting you in the challenges. Now, this is a relatively minor change. Instead of the challenge being named after a week, like we've had week 49, this was week 50, um, it's going to be labeled by the challenge number that we are on. So for Jimmy Wales, he will be challenge one. When we do Paul Gilmartin, he will be challenge two. So if we get halfway through the year, you know exactly how many guests we have done. It will be reflected by the 
number of the challenge. And the other thing you're going to see a difference is in the colors. And that kind of brings us, uh, you see the difference in the post there? Yes, that's our 2022 post. And so that brings us to the next change. Now, um, Chris has done some really exciting updates on the WikiTree logo and tree, you know, and, and he's gotten a lot of input on this and tried to, to give something that, um, you know, people wanted. And he's bringing us into the new year with a fresh new look. So, of course, let the sources decide. Ants with 2021. This was our year of accuracy. And that's um, coming to an end. Not that we're going to stop being accurate, but that was our focus this year. And for 2022, it'll be a year of connections. Now, the WikiTree Challenge graphic has the new WikiTree logo highlighting our networking. And, you know, DNA connections is what these icons are all about. Uh, the main tree that you see on the main wiki tree uh, page has already changed and it's also been updated with a fresh new look. And here's one of the things that you guys are going to be, I think, really excited about. I'm excited about um, one of the things, you know, that I really wanted to see this year was more input from the participants on what you liked, what you didn't like, ways to improve it. You know, and we really didn't have a, a good solid way to have like a drop box of suggestions. But one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be presenting privately to you guys instead of free popcorn, Greg, that's right, because it's going to be at your house. So <laughs> um, we're going to be doing a private showing to the people that have actually researched. And that way you guys can give some input or react to the things you found. Uh, maybe you didn't know somebody found this other story out. You can react to that. You can ask questions. You can add comments on, you know, what you had difficulties researching for that guest, things like that. And it will be recorded. And, um, you know, and that way we can incorporate the snippets from that into a final video that will go online. So it won't be live like this. Uh, the different parts of it will be recorded, but I'm really excited that you guys are going to um, be able to participate a little bit more interactively with the reveals. They're still talking about popcorn. So <laughs> to find out more about the challenge and its changes, be sure to watch the WikiTree G2G forum, which is our genealogist to genealogist forum for announcements. And with all of that, I wish you all a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. I'm excited about the 2022. Oh, and don't go away too quickly because this is not our last broadcast of the year. Now I'm coming back next Wednesday night without the internet lapse. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, we're going to be doing some exciting stuff. So there's, we're going to have some of the participants and captains on. We will be announcing who the winner of the physical trophy is uh, for the year for the 2021 Wiki Tree Challenge. We'll be talking somewhat about the MVPs and some of those special highlights that we've come across this year, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you clear your calendar, and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Good night. Bye.